Hi, I'm Bill Earle, fine art photographer and image maker. Today I'd like to share with you a brief tutorial on post-processing a light sculpted image. Let's begin with the finished product, which is what you're seeing on the screen, and I'll talk briefly about how a light sculpted image is created. It's created using a series of exposures or frames within the camera, each frame being lit individually with a moving light. Essentially the camera is set to bulb on the shutter speed, the shutter is opened, and the light is moved around the image illuminating the areas that need to be or want to be illuminated. And then at the end what we do is we compile all those frames into layers and masks in Photoshop to achieve the finished product. So what I'll take you through in the rest of this tutorial is the post-processing component of this particular image. When we started we talked about the fact that a final light painted or light sculpted image is made up of multiple layers and multiple exposures from the camera and from the shooting session. And those layers are added to the master and stacked up to give us to bring in the light that we want in with different sections of the image. So rather than take you through the process of adding every individual layer that was used to make up the image for, for this particular picture, what I want to do is just take you through adding one of those. So what we're seeing here is just a base master image, basically untouched right out of the camera, which we'll use as our foundation. This image here is obviously a piece of the celery that has some nice light painted onto it. So what we want to do is add that layer over to the master. So I could add the entire image, however that would bring in a lot of extra information that we don't need and make the master image very, very large. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select part of the image that we want to bring in. So I'm going to do that with the lasso tool, hit the L key to select the lasso tool. I'm going to lasso this area because that's all I want to bring in. I'm going to hit the V key to get to my move tool. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag this onto the master image. Holding the shift key forces it to align. So now we're back to our master image and we have something that's on there but really doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to do is add a mask. Now the first thing I'm going to do is change the blend mode to lighten because we only want to bring in the lighter areas. So that looks reasonable as is. However, we don't we want to make sure we don't bring in any un, unwanted or unneeded artifacts or bits of light. So we're going to mask that out completely. Then what we're going to do while we have our mask highlighted is we're going to paint in the light that we want. So I'm going to take and I've selected a soft brush with my brush tool and I'm going to make that a little smaller. Now you can wiggle the opacity with the brush if you choose to. I'm going to go 100% and what I'm going to do, I, I know that this is sort of the area where we want to add that light. So then I'm just going to, with the white selected to allow the mask to open up, I'm going to just start to paint in that light. You can see how that works. And again, you can use different brush techniques for this. There's a lot of ways to do it. So essentially, that's how we do that. And then you can see, if I turn that layer on and off, what, what happens when we bring in that light. And again, it's a series of this same process, different exposures and different captures to bring in different, different, different pieces and different sections of the light. Okay, we're going to start with the finished image. What I'm going to do is turn off the visibility on all of the layers so we can start from the bottom and work our way up. So we're going to turn on our background layer, which is essentially the goal with the background is a, an evenly lit version of the picture with everything lit evenly and a fairly low exposure because as we build this image, we're going to add light to it. So one of the glaring problems right away with this image is the highlight on the knife handle. So I took care of that with a copy of the background, masked it out, and just dodged that down a bit to relieve the brightness of that highlight. Then we're going to take 
the next capture or the next frame from the camera we're going to add it to our master image and when we start what we do is we it, the, the, the layer comes in with a with a mask that's wide open so we black it out and then what we do with a brush is we just paint in the light that we want to see which you can see here with the mask that's what we've done it's important to black out the entire image before you start and just paint in what you need um, otherwise you could get some peripheral light or artifacts that you don't really want in the image then we're going to go to the next layer and it's more of the same now in this particular layer this capture was the ends of the celery which for my taste is a little bit too bright so we add a curves adjustment layer on top of it to just to bring that brightness down a bit which you can see there now this little arrow indicates that that curves adjustment layer only applies to the layer immediately below it. So if you hold the option key on a Mac or the alt key on Windows and you can see you get that little arrow graphic that tells you that. So if I click it, now you can see what it does if that curve is applied to the entire image. So we're going to only apply it to the layer immediately below it. Layer three, more of the same. We bring in some of the green leaves of the carrots. Layer four, more of the same. Now those carrot stalks are a little bit bright for my taste again, so again we did the same thing. We had a curves adjustment layer just to bring that down a little bit. And that's really season to taste. It's what you want the image to look like. We brought in more of the green leaves from the carrots. And again, you can see it's sort of a repeating of the same process with different layers and different captures from the camera. So we're building this image by adding light as we move up the layer stack. So there's the onion. Just a little highlight on the onion. We didn't need a whole lot on the onion to define the shape of it. Then we bring in some more light over here on the left of the image. And that's giving us some more light on the green leaves of the carrot and it also throws a little bit of light on the cutting board which is nice to have gives a little more richness and definition so then we move up and we have another one which is the corner of the cutting board which again adds a little bit of depth and richness now in this image I did not name all of my layers sometimes that's a good idea it's a personal choice if you want to name specifically what they are not a bad idea here we've illuminated the carrots and I'll turn that mask off so you can see it's got some peripheral stuff and some of that light we didn't want so we masked it out it puts sort of a a harsh looking light on the side of the onion that we didn't really want so we just masked that and again we start with a fully blacked out mask and just paint in or bring in the light that we want to bring in more of the carrots over here and then we have again more of the same a little more on the cutting board to give it some richness and depth I say depth it's depth and definition then we've we've added some light to the base of the celery which is nice brings in that detail and over here we start on the knife the knife handle we brought in and that threw a little bit of light on the cutting board as well which is not bad I like that then we brought in the edge of the knife blade and we brought in a little more of the knife blade to give it some more definition. So that's it for that part of it. Now the background, as you can see at this point, is sort of flat. There's no light on it. It's, it's nice wood, but it's flat. So what I did here in this layer stack that's actually a group of, of two, two curved layers, and I'll turn those off so we're back to our flat background. So I put in this sort of dash or, or streak of light, if you will, using a curve. Then I wanted to deal with the edges a little bit and sort of added a vignette with another curve. And I was quite happy with how that turned out. Then I wanted to darken that overall background a little bit. So I did that with another curves layer, curves adjustment layer. And you can see that just brings it down. And I masked out the bottom part of the image because I did not want I turn that mask off you can see it darkens the whole image which I did not want then these light sculpting images at times tend to get a little bit dark so at least when I do them they do 
So that's probably more me than the technique. So I just bring it back up a little bit with some with an overall brightness adjustment layer. So that's it. Hopefully that was very helpful and stop back soon.